Hey everyone, sorry I'm not sitting at the usual set for this video. Uh, honestly, I am setting things up uh, for a anniversary stream tonight. So tonight uh, is we are celebrating the fourth anniversary of Nintendo Prime as a YouTube channel. Hopefully you come and join that stream. It should be live uh, around 8.30 p.m. CT, maybe a little bit earlier. Hope to see you guys all there. Uh, because of that, all my setup is, is now like stationed, I would say stationed the battle station for that. Uh, so, since the camera is out of commission for this video, I think it's okay, because I, I, I have some stuff to talk about here. Uh, and I want to start off by, by mentioning that I don't care what people's personal preferences are. And I say this because everyone has their own personal preference on the games they enjoy, right? Whether you're playing on PlayStation Xbox, PC, mobile phones, the Switch, whatever you're playing on. Maybe you're, you're VR, where it wasn't like one of those Oculus Quest things that completely, like you can play completely wirelessly, no PC needed. Like, I don't really care what you're playing on, right? It doesn't matter to me. Maybe you go to old school arcades. Maybe you like to buy arcade cabinets. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you're on like one of those old school digital you know, handheld only games that only has like one game on it, like an old school game and watch or something, right? I, I don't care what you enjoy playing, right? Because personal preference on the games you enjoy are, you know, they're just that they're personal. But in this case, the reason we're talking about this is because not because someone has a personal preference for what they enjoy, but it's about why they dismiss games. And a grander conversation on if there's a problem with games on Nintendo Switch. Uh, so this comes from a rather popular YouTuber named uh, The Uncle Al Show. Uh, if you ever check him out on YouTube, he does a lot of uh, funny videos and parodies and skits. And he did a conversation piece a while ago talking about how he thought you know a handful of Nintendo games are just you know not worth 60 bucks. Uh, and we'll get into that in a moment. But first off, he, he, on Twitter here, he put out a tweet. And he says, okay, this is going to make me public enemy number one, which, I mean, there's quite a few people that weren't happy with it. But as you see, it has more likes than tweets replies all that jazz so uh honestly I, I i think people are more agreeing with him so we'll see where i stand and where you stand at the end of this video uh, but he says uh but i'm working on a video and i want to share this this is nintendo switch's lineup impressive isn't it any game company would kill for a lineup like this all right so let's first off look at this lineup and then we'll go down the list so, you know, this lineup has, you know, uh, Mario Odyssey, uh, Breath of the Wild, Hyrule Warriors um, Definitive Edition, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, Captain Toad Treasure Trackers, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, uh, Fire, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, FE Encore, One Two Switch, Pokemon, New Pokemon Snap, Kirby Star Allies. Excited, you can see the whole list here, right? This is a pretty good list. This is not technically, um, you know, all of the exclusive games on Switch. Uh, there, there's some other titles missing out, um, and, and I find it interesting because, you know, you, you, you could say, well, you know, the titles that are not on there don't matter, like Bravely Default 2, right? That's not a Nintendo game, but it is exclusive to the platform, so it is part of that Nintendo library of games, as it were. Uh, and there's other titles, you know, like he includes Mario Golf Super Rush on here, you know, where's the Metro Prime 4, two, Metro Prime 4, whatever, because Mario Golf Super Rush isn't here either. So we'll just go with this list, right? This list is fine. This is a generalized list this is not close to the complete exclusive list but hey it's a good starting spot right so let's go with this list all right and he says now let's remove remakes and ports all right so fine this is a common criticism of the nintendo switch's library right the common criticism is a majority of it is remakes or ports so let's go to his next list here all right um he says these games are 100 percent made for switch We'll talk about that in a moment because he's actually kind of wrong. Um, still a pretty healthy lineup of Mario. I mean games, right? All right, so let's let's take a grander look at this one. So as you see, there's a bunch of games missing because there's actually been a lot of Wii U ports. Uh, but, you know, Odyssey's still there. You still have Breath of the Wild. Um, pretty solid list. This is all basically Switch exclusives. However, of note, Breath of the Wild is not a Switch exclusive. So when he says... You know, these were games 100% made for Switch. Breath of the Wild was made for Wii U, and then 
it was brought to Switch. Now, yes, it released on both simultaneously, but everybody knows the development history of this. This is not a made-for-Switch game. This is a game made for Wii U that was delayed to launch on Switch because Wii U failed. But, anyways, this does not actually fit this. But you'll see later why he leaves Breath of the Wild on here. Uh, so he says, let's narrow it down even further. So, th so here you go. So this is a pretty solid lineup, right? You know, you got your first uh, New Gen Pokemon games. I don't know why you got rid of the Let's Go games. Those literally, I mean, I guess because it's a remake, I, I, I suppose, of sorts. Uh, but there you go. Th this is the list. This is his list, anyways, that he has come up with. I, I can understand getting rid of the Wii. When, when you're trying to judge the value of Switch's offerings, getting rid of the Wii U ports, I get it. I don't think it's fair, but I get it. All right? So, then he says, next, let's remove any game that Nintendo has been using the Finish It Later strategy for. All right. So, the Finish It Later strategy is one I find to be very interesting because his video is out now and he talks about in the finish it later strategy games like arms games like splatoon 2 games like animal crossing new horizons you'll see that's now missing and what he did in eliminating those games is he's saying that these games are not worth sixty dollars at launch because these games continue to get content updates after launch now what I find dumb about this is one breath of the wild literally had paid dlc after launch age of calamity literally has paid dlc coming this year uh mario odyssey had free content with the luigi stuff added after the fact what i'm finding here is i think there's a certain preference that the uncle al show has uh for what he thinks games should be the idea of adding new content to multiplayer games, because all the games you got rid of are multiplayer games. The idea of adding new content to multiplayer games over time is a longevity thing. It's not about whether the games were 60 bucks at launch. It's about keeping players engaged over a long period of time. And if you look at all online multiplayer games across the entire gaming industry, they're all doing this. To say a game isn't worth 60 bucks at launch because it purposely creates nonstop engagement for years ahead is a bit silly, right? Like, isn't that a silly notion? It's an online multiplayer game. It wants to keep you engaged beyond launch. So if you take all the content planned for something like Splatoon 2 and you crush it all together, throw it in there day one, what's keeping you engaged past the first week? You don't have new weapons to look forward to. You don't have new gear to look forward to, new maps to look for. You don't have anything to look forward to getting added to your experience moving forward. So what is the point of throwing that all in there? And when you look at the history of online multiplayer games, it's almost always been this way. Now, back in the 90s, we had expansion packs, right? That's what they were called. They were called expansion packs on PC. You were playing a PC multiplayer game. You didn't have all the content day one. You got expansion packs. Now, look. There's obviously some things where he talks about in his video on all of this where, hey, some of this content, we saw references to this content in the thing, meaning this is all cut content from the game. One, you can't prove it's cut content just because there's a one-line reference to a character. All you can prove is, hey, they were planning more characters. It doesn't mean those characters were ready to go day one. So you can't factually say it's cut content unless you can prove the character stuff was in the game. Not just the name of the character, but like the actual character itself was in the game and just not locked, right? Like, so we, you can't definitively say that the content was cut to bring out later just because it's been referenced. In fact, people have actually found out in the original releases of some older games, Age of Empires, there was references to future expansion packs in the base code. Does that mean that content was cut? I don't see that criticism coming. This is just what happens with online multiplayer games. There's always more content added years down the road, you know, months, weeks, years down the road to keep you engaged. That's the point. They've been doing this in the game industry forever. This isn't a Nintendo thing. So it's fine if that means multiplayer games are not for him. If he just wants to admit multiplayer video games aren't his cup of tea, cool. Cool. At least the $60 ones. Maybe he's fine with the War Zones and the Fortnites and all the free-to-play ones because, hey, he didn't pay any money to enter. But I'm just saying that, you know, I, I think it's a little disingenuous to just say, hey, these games aren't worth 60 bucks just because I don't like the delivery model of online multiplayer games because this is what the whole industry does. Other companies aren't getting a pass. He, he mentions in his one video, see of Thieves. 
See, if these look at that, it didn't have an end game. It got trashed. Yeah, you're right. Critics did not enjoy it at launch. Some of it is because the core gameplay mechanics without that added content felt boring. Okay? While Nintendo's games might not have had all the content you want at launch, the core mechanics felt engaging. Maybe there was a core mechanical issue if it needed the content to justify all of the mechanics. Now, that's not me knocking Sea of Thieves. It did get updates. It did get content. Today, it is a much better game. And it got a second life thanks to Game Pass and a second life thanks to live streamers. And it's sold many millions of copies and, and is considered a success by Microsoft. So Sea of Thieves is fine. Just because critics didn't, you know, universally love it at launch doesn't mean, you know, that Nintendo games always get a free pass. ARMS was not universally loved at launch. I'm sorry, go look at the review ratings. It wasn't universally loved at launch. Okay? Anyways, moving on. Uh, now he wants to narrow it down more. Starting to look a bit barren, but still not completely. Quite a few solid titles here. Now this will be more subjective. This entire thing's been subjective. That's what I find funny about it. Let me remove games that I feel aren't worth $60 because they give you quality updates that keep you playing for years. Anyways, he says, now I'm going to narrow it down to the must-have games. Now, remember, this is completely subjective when you talk about must-have games because I'm looking at this list right here. Uh, you know, the personal opinion, uh, Mario Odyssey, must-have. Breath of the Wild, my favorite game of all time, clearly a must-have. Age of Calamity, um... As a Zelda fan, it's must-have. If you're not deep into Zelda and really care about Breath of the Wild, maybe not. But if Breath of the Wild makes your must-have list, I feel like Age of Calamity probably should. Uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Freaking amazing game. Definitely a must-have for me. Fire Emblem Warriors. Okay. Okay. What I don't understand is how Fire Emblem Warriors, which factually got DLC after the fact, is on this list. Where the hell is Fire Emblem Three Houses? Oh, wait. He moved it down here. Here it is. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Fantastic game. Fantastic game. To me, must have. Fire Emblem Warriors. I can, I'm not a huge Fire Emblem fan. Kind of hit or miss, but I do own the game. 1-2 Switch, I would probably say, is, it, you wouldn't consider that must have. That should have been a pack-in. New Pokemon Snap. It's a niche game. Quality game. I own it. I'm enjoying it. But it's more niche, right? It's a photography game. It's a very good photography game. But... Um, it's a niche product. I wouldn't say necessarily must have more of a nice to have. All right. Yoshi's crafted world. I think it's actually really, really good. I think if you have kids, uh, and you have a family, it's a great family game, uh, as a solo game, maybe not so much, but you won't, you're playing with your children. Like I did. It's pretty solid. Super smash Bros. ultimate. I think everyone knows that's a quintessential game. Paper Mario. Um, I, I, this is the one of the titles on switch. I haven't played. So, I'm, I don't really have an opinion here or there on Paper Mario yet. It, it is something I plan to get to eventually, but it is admittedly like the one game on this list uh, that I haven't really dived into. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I mean, that's a full game at 60 bucks. That's a quintessential game. Um, I feel like it's a must-have, but again, it's going to come around to the taste. If you're not into the kind of action JRPG game that it is, all right, Luigi's Mansion 3, fan-freaking-tastic. It might be my favorite entry in the whole franchise. Love it. That's quintessential to me. Uh, the Olympic Games are always kind of hit or miss. Uh, this one, I think, is a solid one, but I don't know that you that you'd consider it must-have, but it's a fun party game. Uh, same with Clubhouse Games. Clubhouse Games 51. I don't know how many of you guys have actually played it because it's just a bunch of classic games, right? But you can play multiplayer, online multiplayer, playing against friends, playing in local multiplayer. Um, it's a fun. The, the, this, the Clubhouse 51 games literally couldn't be better than what it is. It is basically the perfect classic game collection and the many different ways it lets you play with multiple switches and online and on one you know two players on one switch it's really cool i got to admit while this is not what i would call a must-have game because it's more like repurposing games that people used to own board game wise um for what it is it's practically perfect but again i personally wouldn't say it's quintessential because you know backgammon and checkers and chess and all you can play these games obviously without a switch so um astral chain I mean, what needs to be said there? Besides everything, everything. You know what I see missing? Where's Damon X Machina? Poor Damon X Machina. If Astral Chain is here, where the hell is Damon X Machina? Nintendo paid and published that one too. Paid for that game and published that one too. Where the hell is Damon X Machina? See, this is what I'm saying. This list isn't complete. 
Um, and then you got Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, Pokemon Sword and Shield's divisive. I think every Pokemon release at this point is divisive. Obviously, these are really popular. There's millions of people that love it. There's millions of people that are kind of so-so on it. And I'm sure there's some people that really, really hate it. I, I, I don't know. I have not tried them beyond a demo. Uh, I thought the demo was fun. But again, I think buy them. Of course, I've been kind of following Naruto Pokemon for a while. It's not necessarily um, Sword and Shield's fault. But I will be Legends Arceus. I'm all on top of that. I also own Pokemon Snap. So I, something about the mainline series has been turning me off. But, you know, maybe Pokemon Legends Arceus is, is, is... So whatever. I feel like this is a pretty solid list of, of a, lot, a lot of must-haves. And then some, you know, hey, in certain situations, that's what they're for. All right. So now he's going to go down to his own must-have list. And he says, this is it. No fluff, no half-baked filler games. No meh. To boring, lazy, slash bad games. The Switch part, the Switch library largely consists of ports, remakes, and middle-of-the-road sequels. In the short term, this has done wonders for Nintendo. So let's look at this. I mean, look at the games he took off. Look at the games he took off. I mean, look at this, and then look at his prior list. Okay. Take a hard look. Take a hard look. Look at this. Where the hell is Astral Chain? I mean, this is subjective, right? These are, when he breaks it down, these are, to him, the quintessential Switch games. Which, by the way, that's not that bad of a list. If you think about that, that's six. What is that? Um, six, that's eight games. So basically, a little over, almost, almost two major games on average per year, he finds to be quintessential. He finds to be must-have. He finds to be worth the money. Again, completely subjective. But to call all the rest boring, lazy, slash bad. Now, again, personal preferences. I get it. I get it. I'm the kid, not the guy for personal preferences. I'm guessing that he really enjoys games much more on Sony platform. Sony focuses a lot more on single-player experiences, focuses a lot more on jam-packed 60 well, now $70 experiences, sometimes cheaper. Uh, Miles Morales was a little cheaper, also a little shorter. So I'm assuming that he prob based on what I'm seeing here, these are all basically single-player experiences. I mean, Smash being the kind of exception in here, but Luigi's Mansion, it's got a co-op mode, but let's be honest, it's practically a single-player experience. Fire Emblem Three Houses, single-player experience. I've seen it by Chronicles 2, single-player experience. Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. Again, has co-op, but is basically a single-player experience. Um, these two are obviously single-player experiences. I know, there's some there's some faint co-op uh, in Mario Odyssey, but again, uh, Mario Plus Rabbids has some multiplayer aspects, but let's just be honest, it's primarily a single-player experience. So what I see here is that he really enjoys $60 jam-packed single-player experiences. And then he doesn't even enjoy all of them. I mean, he didn't enjoy Astral Chain. Apparently, Astral Chain, what, what is boring, lazy, bad, filler? I, I, I don't understand it. And then there's other games out here, like obviously Animal Crossing's not on here. And we'll get into that in a moment. I, I, I don't get this list. Now, again, personal preference. I just wish he could just admit. I think the Uncle Al show just needs to admit, hey, you know what? I just don't really like Nintendo games that much. I th and I think that's okay. I don't think we need to trash the games because they're not what we want, right? And again, I know. People are going to say Nintendo Defense Force, all this jazz. It's fine. Again, I don't care that this is all he prefers to play. When I look at the PlayStation 4 library, there was only about eight games I thought that I were, were quintessential for me. So? It doesn't factually mean there's only eight great games. I can recognize other games are really good and other games are really great, even if they're not for me. Right? Like, I... That that's me though. Not everyone's like me, right? I can't I can't you know fault people for not being like me. It says if it weren't uh, for a lot of these critically acclaimed ports filling in the gaps, the Switch exclusive lineup probably wouldn't be looking too hot. People are now noticing that games like Animal Crossing, which launched with minimal content, aren't filling themselves out properly. I there there has been some criticism that we haven't had a major update for Animal Crossing that adds like significant features from prior games but I also feel like that's disingenuous to Animal Crossing New Horizons in general um, Animal Crossing New Horizons already has a crap load of features never seen in prior games to me this is kind of like bitching oh my god they didn't release updates for Breath of the Wild that added dungeons to the game even though it does a shitload of stuff that's never been done in Zelda before like I, I feel like it's just it, it's kind of a disingenuous statement to to bitch about Animal Crossing having seasonal events and seasonal updates and, and, and no major updates when it's a life sim. I, 
I, I, it was clearly to me worth sixty bucks at launch. I mean, even if you were done with the game in a week, which I don't know how you can be because every single month there's new stuff to do. But, anyways, uh, moving on to his next his, his next comment. He says the Switch has also been greatly helped by the novel concept of the portable console gaming. I can I can definitely agree. The whole concept of, of bringing console quality games on the go definitely a selling point for the Switch. But that's an idea you could sell on that premise alone once. Then we've been there, done that. The Switch Two would be just that. Why would you bother upgrading? Because the games are going to look better, be bigger, bigger storage, and you'll be able to get more third party multiplayer games. One thing one thing he doesn't talk about any of this is all the third party games that are on Switch. I mean, Switch has a massive third-party library. Um, so why would you do that again? Why I don't know. Why do people... Okay. The, to me, this is like arguing, okay, that's a novel idea that works once. So the Game Boy only worked once? The Game Boy Advance didn't work? The DS didn't work? The 3DS didn't Like The novel idea of taking console games on the go, why would that only work one time? I, I, how? Like, how, how do you wrap your mind around that and say it only works one time? I, I don't know. Again, his personal opinion. Um, and he goes on to say, this is when the game library will be instrumental in the future system success. And Switch 2 won't have a failed systems library of games to fall back on. So, will the trickle of game releases grind to a halt? So, he's still kind of going on the, you know, even though he admitted when he removed all the ports and remakes, that um, there still was actually a pretty decent library of games. He just decided that all those games aren't worth a damn to him. You know, see what I'm saying? Like, it, there's a pretty big library games on switch um so anyways so will the trickle of game releases grind to a halt with switch 2 or maybe we'll just keep keep getting ports of older games next up he says i guess this is just a really long-winded way of saying that i'm a bit disappointed with the switch library thus far and this is where i want to post to you are you guys disappointed with the switch library as well some of you guys probably are and again personal preferences matter because personal preferences decide obviously what's of value to you and what you enjoy. I'm just a different kind of person. Even if I'm not super into a game, I can appreciate why other people are and admit it's a quality experience, even if it's not an experience that I would enjoy, right? I think Call of Duty Warzone is actually a fairly decent game. It's just not something I'm that into, at least not right now. So, and that's just one of many examples I could give. So yeah, I, I honestly think that I'm not disappointed by the Switch's library. I've had a lot of fun, and I'm not even disappointed with the Wii U ports. I, I'm looking forward to Skyward Sword HD, because I don't have a Wii anymore. And being able to use traditional controls, I don't know. I, I might prefer motion still, but it, it's nice to have the option, especially when I'm on the go. So I I don't know. I mean, value is in the eye of the beholder, right? Uh, but to me, it looks like the Nintendo has been taking an easy route with many of their Switch releases. Again, this is a very common, common criticism. He says, game development takes a ton of time. I don't take that for granted. I'm not saying that every game needs to be Breath of the Wild because that would just be unrealistic. Okay, If every game was Breath of the Wild, Switch would have like two games because that takes hundreds of millions of dollars and, you know, it's 500 plus staff in five years. Uh, I'm not saying that every game needs to be Breath of the Wild, but number of these games feel like they exist simply for the sake of existing. Look, Yoshi on Switch. It's not great, but here... Yoshi's Crafted World isn't that bad. It's not that bad of a game. I think, like, he doesn't... He just doesn't have, have fine value in this because Yoshi's Crafted World's a family game. So, I, for someone like him, I could see where, like, this is a whole... Like, what It, it, it kind of feels like he's complaining because Switch has variety. Variety is a problem now just because it doesn't appeal to you personally. Yeah, I don't know. Um, then he says, I think the illusion is starting to wear off for a lot of people. I can't help but feel that the Switch 2, I mean, the illusion is totally wearing off. That's why Switch is literally peaking in sales, and Nintendo has a projected 30 million units it's selling this fiscal year. Yeah, the luster is wearing off. I, is it really? We're in the peak years. The luster is just as strong as it's ever been. Uh, anyways, I can't help people feel like the Switch 2 will be fighting more of an uphill battle, but I guess they'll always have that big Mario game to grab everyone's attention. Then all bets are off. He goes on, uh, talks about you know trying you know trying to avoid a whirlwind of, of vitriol, and I'm sure some people were pretty a lot harsher than me. Um, but yeah, I honestly want to throw this to you guys. What do you guys think about his take? What do you think about my take on his take? Um, I personally think the Switch has a great library, has a lot of variety. I think that there obviously is some shortcomings for Nintendo and some things I wish they did differently and things I, I want them to improve. I am not just a shill. I, there, there was a commenter the other day where people think that Nintendo pays me behind the scenes. Let me tell you, Nintendo, they don't even send me copies of games and you think they're paying me? My God, I wish. 
I'll work for you, Nintendo. I'll, uh, you can pay me to be a shill. I, I mean, at that point, I would just literally come straight out and say, hey, all my content is sponsored by Nintendo. Um, but yeah, that's just me. Uh, you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Long video, but I hope you guys uh, had a good time. And hopefully I'll see you guys at tonight's birthday stream. Catch you guys in the next video.